Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into a story that's as perplexing as it is chilling. The Monster with 21 Faces This is a tale of corporate sabotage, mysterious letters, and a criminal mastermind who was never caught. Buckle up, this one's a roller coaster. Let's set the stage. Picture this, you're Katsuhisa Azaki, the president of Glico, one of Japan's leading food companies. You're at the top of your game, living a life many could only dream of. But then, one fateful night, your world turns upside down. You're kidnapped right from your own home, and your company becomes the target of a series of bizarre and terrifying threats. Now, this isn't some movie plot. This is real life. Katsuhisa Azaki was actually abducted from his very own bathtub, if you can believe it. The kidnappers were audacious, bypassing security measures and taking him hostage. And they didn't stop there. They demanded a staggering 1 billion yen and 100 kilograms of gold bullion for his release. I mean, can you even fathom the audacity and meticulous planning it would take to pull off something like this? But hold on, the story gets even more twisted. While Azaki was eventually able to escape, the nightmare was far from over for him and his company. The criminals, who later came to be known as the monster with 21 faces, didn't just vanish. They continued to haunt Glico, tampering with their products and sending out letters boasting about their deeds. So, let's pause and let that sink in. This was the horrifying reality that Katsuhisa Azaki faced, and it was just the beginning of a wave of terror that would grip not just Glico but eventually all of Japan. Stick around as we delve deeper into this mind-boggling case. Alright, folks, if you thought this case couldn't get any weirder, brace yourselves. The group calling themselves the Monster with 21 Faces didn't just stop at kidnapping and corporate sabotage. Oh no, they took it a step further. They became pen pals with the police and the terrorized companies. But these weren't just any letters. These were messages that would make Edgar Allan Poe proud. Imagine being a police officer, already stressed and frustrated by the lack of leads, and then receiving a letter that reads like a riddle wrapped in an enigma. These letters were poetic, filled with literary references, and sometimes, believe it or not, they even had a dark sense of humor. It's like the criminals were playing a high-stakes game, but only they knew the rules. One letter even gave detailed instructions on how to find a hidden container of hydrochloric acid, as if challenging the police to a twisted scavenger hunt. And the audacity. They would sometimes announce their plans in advance, like a villain in a comic book, and still manage to evade capture. And let's talk about the tone of these letters. They ranged from taunting to philosophical, sometimes even critiquing society and the police force. It's as if the monster with 21 faces was not just a criminal group but a band of rogue philosophers, challenging the very fabric of society. So, what does this tell us? That we're not just dealing with criminals in the conventional sense. We're dealing with individuals who are deeply twisted, yet highly intelligent and articulate. It's like trying to catch a ghost that not only haunts you but also talks to you, teases you, and makes you question your own sanity. Stay with me, because we're about to dive even deeper into this labyrinth of terror and confusion. Okay, everyone, let's zoom out for a second. The monster with 21 faces didn't just have it out for Glico and its president, Katsuhisa Izaki. No, they widened their net to include other titans of the food industry, like Morinaga. Now, you've got to ask yourself, why? Why target companies that bring sweetness and joy to people's lives? Picture this, you're the CEO of a major food company. You go to bed thinking about sales, market shares, and maybe the next big flavor. The last thing you expect is to become the target of a criminal syndicate that seems to have stepped right out of a psychological thriller. So, what's the deal? Is this some sort of vendetta against the food industry? Are they trying to make a statement about consumerism? Or is it a smokescreen for something even darker? Theories abound. Some say it's an inside job, a bitter ex-employee or a rival company. Others speculate it's an extremist group trying to destabilize the economy. But here's where it gets even more chilling. These companies weren't just random picks, they were methodically chosen. The monster with 21 faces seemed to know intricate details about these companies. Details you wouldn't know unless you had inside information. It's as if they were saying, we see you, we know you, and we can get to you whenever we want. And let's not forget the ripple effect. The terror inflicted on these companies didn't just affect the CEOs or the employees. It shook consumer confidence to its core. Imagine second-guessing every candy bar or pack of gum you buy, wondering if it's tainted. That's the level of psychological warfare we're talking about here. So, as we delve deeper into this twisted tale, keep these questions in mind. Who would benefit from targeting these companies? And what does it reveal about the monster with 21 faces? Because, trust me, we're far from solving this enigma. All right. Folks, brace yourselves because this part of the story is a roller coaster of emotions, especially if you have faith in the justice system. Imagine being a detective on this case. You've dealt with burglars, murderers, and all sorts of criminals, but nothing, and I mean nothing, could prepare you for the mind games played by the monster with 21 faces. From the get-go, the police were out of their depth. 
It's like they were playing chess with a grandmaster while still learning the rules. They set up stakeouts, sure, but it was as if the monster knew their every move. Picture this, officers huddled in unmarked cars, eyes peeled, waiting for any sign of the culprit. Hours go by. Nothing. Then, just when you think it's another wasted night, a letter appears out of nowhere, taunting the police for their incompetence. It's like chasing a ghost. But wait, it gets worse. The monster didn't just evade capture, they humiliated the police in the most public way possible. They sent letters to newspapers, detailing their crimes and mocking the police's failed attempts to catch them. Imagine being a high-ranking officer and reading a letter in the morning paper that not only admits to a crime but ridicules your entire force. It's a slap in the face, a blow to the ego, and a public relations nightmare all rolled into one. And let's not forget the emotional toll on the individual officers. These are men and women who have dedicated their lives to upholding the law, to protecting the public. And here they are, made to look like fools. The frustration, the sleepless nights, the pressure from above to solve the case, it's a boiling pot of stress that no one should endure. So, as we navigate through this labyrinth of a case, remember this, the monster with 21 faces didn't just outsmart the police, they broke them, emotionally and psychologically. And that, my friends, is a level of villainy that's hard to comprehend. Okay, guys, grab your detective hats because we're about to dive into the rabbit hole of theories and suspects. This case is like a puzzle where the pieces keep changing shape, you think you've got it, but then something new comes along and throws everything into chaos. First up, let's talk about the insider theory. Given the level of detail and planning, some believe that this could be an inside job. Maybe someone within Glico or Morinaga with a grudge. Someone who knew the ins and outs of the company's operations. It's a chilling thought, right? Your colleague, the guy you share coffee breaks with, could be orchestrating this reign of terror. But hold on, what about the lone wolf theory? Could one person really pull off such intricate crimes? The letters, the kidnappings, the taunts, it's a lot for one person. But then again, the Zodiac Killer operated alone and left a trail of unsolved ciphers. So, it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility. Now, let's get into the organization theory. Some speculate that this could be the work of an entire criminal organization. Think about it, the meticulous planning, the flawless execution, and the audacity to mock the police. It screams of a group with resources and a shared motive, doesn't it? And then, there's the enigmatic fox-eyed man. Ah, this character is like something straight out of a spy thriller, described as having piercing. Almost hypnotic eyes, he was spotted during a botched police stakeout. Who is he? A mastermind? A henchman? Or just a red herring? His very existence adds another layer of mystery to an already convoluted case. So, as we delve deeper into this enigma, remember that every theory brings its own set of questions, its own set of fears. And that's what makes this case so hauntingly fascinating. We're not just looking for a criminal, we're searching for a chameleon, a shapeshifter who defies all conventional wisdom. And that, my friends, is why the monster with 21 faces continues to captivate and confound us to this day. Alright, folks, let's take a moment to step away from the facts and figures, the theories and suspects, and talk about something that's often overlooked but incredibly important. The emotional toll. Imagine clocking into work, not knowing if today's the day your company gets targeted. Imagine the weight of that dread. That uncertainty hanging over you like a dark cloud. You're an employee at Glico or Morinaga, and the atmosphere is thick with tension. Every unexpected sound makes your heart skip a beat. Every unfamiliar face could be the fox-eyed man or another accomplice. The break room conversations are no longer about weekend plans or family. They're about safety measures, about the latest letters, about the fear that has gripped your life. And let's not forget the families. Imagine being a spouse, a child, or a parent to these employees. The dinner table is silent, the air heavy with unspoken fears. You hug your loved ones a little tighter, a little longer, each day. The emotional scars run deep and they don't fade easily. This is the human cost, the emotional wreckage left in the wake of these crimes. Now, let's talk about the legacy of the monster with 21 faces. Years have rolled by, but the specter of this criminal, or criminals, still looms large. Why? Because this case challenges us. It challenges our faith in law enforcement, our sense of safety, and even our understanding of criminal psychology. This story has become a sort of urban legend, a cautionary tale in the annals of true crime. It's taught in criminology classes, discussed in online forums, and featured in countless documentaries. Why? Because it's a puzzle with missing pieces, a book with chapters ripped out. And that's why we're still talking about it, why it still captivates us. It's a mirror reflecting our own vulnerabilities, our own fears. It's a riddle that begs to be solved, not just by detectives but by anyone who's ever questioned the depths of human depravity and the heights of human ingenuity. So, as we delve into the legacy of this haunting tale, remember that some monsters don't live under our beds, they live among us, hidden in plain sight. And that's what- Alright, we've reached the part where we usually have some answers, some closure. But not this time. 
This case is a maze with no exit. A story with no ending. Who were they? A group. A lone mastermind. What was their endgame? Money? Chaos? A twisted form of justice? These are the questions that haunt us, that make this case a perpetual enigma. They're the questions that keep us up at night, staring at the ceiling, pondering the complexities of human nature and the criminal mind. And the biggest question of all, will we ever find out? Will there ever be a day when the monster with 21 faces is unmasked? These unanswered questions are what make this case so enduringly fascinating and deeply unsettling. They're the reason why this story sticks with us, why it gets under our skin. And maybe, just maybe, that's what the monster with 21 faces wanted all along, to leave us in a perpetual state of wonder and dread. And there we have it, folks. We've delved deep into the labyrinthine tale of the monster with 21 faces, a story that leaves us with more questions than answers. It's a haunting reminder of the complexities of crime and justice, of the thin line between sanity and madness. If this story has gripped you as much as it has me, then you know what to do. Hit that like button, share this video with everyone you know who loves a good mystery. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe for more true crime stories that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Thank you for joining me on this emotional and perplexing journey. Until next time, stay curious, stay vigilant, and most importantly, stay safe.